So today I wanted to cover how you can import a car to um, Unreal because there are some things that don't are not very clear. I've been spending like a whole day just trying to figure this out and even though there are like a ton of tutorials out there for this, um, none of them mention what is absolutely important because I was trusting some of my own knowledge and it didn't work out until I realized something. So let's build a very quick car. Let's make sure we are in the center here. We can go edit mode and we can drag this down, GZ. Important here is, and you have to be absolutely sure, is that you, when you press one on your numpad, you're in front view, right? And you want your car to look to the right. This is absolutely important. I'm going to go down here and set my 3D cursor down here. Set origin to 3D cursor, all G, so it's in the center. And I'm going to additionally move it a little bit up. Then. Shift C and I'm going to also create some quick wheels using a cylinder. We can take this up down to 8 or something. We can RX90 this. SY, make it thinner. And I'm going to move this a little bit out here. Make it smaller. GZ, X, Shift D, X. And I'm going to mirror those. So Shift D, S, X. Minus one, actually S Y minus one because we are looking into a wrong, uh, different direction. But we have to enable the three D cursor, so we mirror it around the three D cursor. So S Y minus one. There we go. And I'm going to select all of them. They're a little bit thin, so I'm going to go to individual origins here. S Y, make them a little bit thick again. Doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, and you will essentially get your vehicle. So. And you can work with that. Now there's an add on called Unreal 4 Vehicle Base Ray. Now it's relatively important that you use this. It can work without the add on as well, but I don't recommend you at all. The link to this add on will be in the description. It's free. Um, it's just uh, simplifying a lot of things. So before we do anything, we want to control A, rotation, scale, apply everything. Second of all, we want to deselect everything and hit upscale objects. Now, or objects will be gigantic. We have to do this in order for things to properly work in Unreal. Then we can set unit scale. What it does is it goes in here under units and it will change the units. Now, I don't want this for as default in each project, so this is why I'm going to do it within only when I'm exporting a car. Then we can select the base and up here we can see vehicle base, vehicle base in there. Then we can front right Select the front right wheel, the rear right, so the back right, the front left, front left, and the rear left. And then we can hit the rig vehicle. And we essentially already get our bones. And now we can also um, use this add-on to only do two um, wheels or four wheels or 16 wheels, it doesn't matter. But yeah, with that you already get things rigged. Important here is that your wheels have the origin in the center. So if it's not, you have to open the search bar and set origin to geometry. See, it didn't move because it's already in the origin. Same goes for that one here. And that's already it basically. Now we can select everything, go to file, export, FBX, and we can just find a location. I'm just going to do it on my desktop really quick because it's just a test. Um, we want only selected object, we only want the armature and the mesh. Now, um, for those who do, did my other tutorials, we know we have to change this here. Forward is X and Z is up. And there's also the other thing under geometry where we have to change this to face for, so we get our proper normals. Apply modifiers if you want. And under armature, we usually change this to primary bone X is X and secondary why? So you shouldn't change the bone orientation. I did this here and I'm going to fix this later, but I want to save you the little arrow I made there. Just stay with the default orientation for the bones. Um, it's necessary for things to work in this specific case, even though normally for characters you would change them. And we don't want to add any leaf bones. Now we can export this. Already exported. Now we can go to Unreal and I'm going to drag in my test car. We got a lot of stuff here. Make sure scale mesh is uh, checked, import mesh is checked. If you don't have unfolded it, unfold this little arrow here. Here's this threshold, which I usually usually change to 000, just because I know my topology. 
We want to create a physics asset. We don't have any animations, we don't need this. And the rest should just be fine, import all. We can take a look here. All right, this is looking pretty good. The thing is though that the root is kind of blended. So, and we have the normals flipped here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back really quick and I'm going to edit mode without the armature selected. And I'm going to Q normals recalculate outside for use under mesh normals recalculate outside or shift in. And I'm going to re-export this really quickly. There is nothing that needs to be changed. The export settings should still be the same. And we can just go back to Unreal here. We can right click on this uh, skeleton mesh here and hit re-import and it will just be re-imported. And you can see now this stuff is right. Though um, the root is still a bit off. I don't know why the um, add-on doesn't do this automatically, but what we have to do is um, take this ball here, EZ, and with a 3D cursor in the center, Shift Z, we have to press Shift S, selection to cursor. So this is one of the other things that don't make sense. Um, I added a root bone, which usually makes a lot of sense because you want the root to be at the bottom and whatever. But when I did this, things are not going to work anymore. So just don't add a root bone. For me, it made sense. It made, makes a lot of sense, but with it, it's just not working. So keep it out of there. So the first thing we're going to do is open the physics essence and we can see we have some rough physics here. Now we want to change a few about it. About it. Let's start with the root here. And in the to uh, bottom right, you can see we have some settings and we want to change this instead of a capsule to a single convex hull, which is more accurate. And we can just hit regenerate bunnies and you can see it's for such a simple uh, um, shape, it's going perfectly around there. We should eventually do the same thing for the uh, tires, but it's not really necessary. I think we can just hit it. If you don't have any, all right, let's say you don't have any um, wheels. Let's just delete it. So I would imagine I also don't have any. We have to check also show constraints here so we can see the constraints. Um, if I go step back, you can see I originally had some. But if I delete this now with the bodies of the tires, they're gone. What we need, have to do now is also show the bones. So if we now select all our bones, right click it and add shape and let's just Actually, we don't even need to do this, just select them and go over here, single convex hull, all the bodies. And you can see they automatically create also the constraints to the body. If we now hit simulate, you can see everything is just working as it should. So next thing we have to do in order to get this working, we have to right click here and create a blueprint. And we are just going to search for wheel. Wheel, and down here we get the wheel, the one with a weird sign here. So. Select and we get it here, and we can just call it car underscore test p or something. And we're going to open this up, and here we go. Now, first of all, we have to select the mesh up here, so we get our mesh in under the mesh section, and we're going to select our car test. And there we go. What we also can do is add a spring on and add a camera. So in that order, they have to be parented onto each other. We can select the spring arm and drag it a bit up, maybe even rotate it a bit, make the spring arm a little bit longer over here, 600 or something. All right, compile. And in the spring arm, we also have to uncheck pitch, yaw, and roll, because otherwise things are going to rotate more. We only want a free camera. Next, under the vehicle movement component here, we have wheel settings, yeah? wheel setup, wheel uh, setup vehicle setup and wheel setup. We have to give them the bone name. So if we go to our skeleton here, we can see the bones RL, RR, FL, FR. And they have to be in the same order in the same exact naming. So RL, let's go over here, RL, RR, FL, and FR. FL and FR. All right, next we need another blueprint, right click, blueprint, and we also type in wheel. And there is the we vehicle wheel, this is what we need. Uh, this one I already created, we need this upper one here. And hit select, <clears throat> and you can just call this wheel settings or something. And we select this here, and over here in the blueprint, in the car test blueprint, under the vehicle mo movement, we have uh, wheel class. 
And we just click on the little arrow here and switch it out to the one we made. All right, you can also unfold it if that's better for you. Now, if we open uh, and go into the card test BP here uh, in the blueprint, and we go to the event graph, now we have to set up the logic. And the first thing I want to do is to right click here and type in console command, yeah, execute console command. And I'm going to plug this into the event begin play because that way we're going to be able to see our collisions um, so we can check if something goes wrong. And what we have to type in is uh, PXVIS, I think it was, and then spacebar collision one. So, all right, with that we're going to be able to see the collisions. Next, we want to set up the camera for that we need to add relative rotation with the spring arm. So basically what it's doing, it's just simply adding the relative rotation and it uh, can do this manually, just dragging out the spring arm here so it knows it's supposed to rotate the spring arm. And we need two of those. So let's copy this over and plug this in here. And what's going in here is um, the mouse input. So I already set this up, uh, project settings under input, you can see down here I have a left and right, uh, actually here, mouse turn X, mouse up, yeah, you just have to hit plus here and create them. You don't even need to create them because I think there's like a mouse X, yeah, it's already in here, the mouse events, mouse X, mouse Y, you could use those, but I'm going to use mouse, my own created one, mouse up and mouse left or something, mouse turn, there we go. It's the same as mouse X and Y, just to like create them myself. And the mouse turn, we also have to right click here on the rotation and split, right click on the rotation and split. We're plugging this in here, and this in here. Uh, just for your visual representation, I can also use mouse X really quickly, wrong one, mouse X. Mouse Y. So basically, those are the same, just that I create my own. And we're going to take the mouse turn and plug it into the yaw Z. And we're going to take the mouse up and plug it into the Y. Now, if we want to test this, you have to go to the world settings over here. And here, default pawn class. Currently, I have none in here. I'm going to select my blueprint, my cup test blueprint. And I'm clicking on that little arrow here so it's in there, or you unfold it and search it. And if we now hit play, you can see we get our car. We cannot move, but the camera is moving around. For me, the mouse direction is inverted. So what I have to do is probably not inverted if you use um, the mouse Y, but for me here it's inverted. So I'm just going to use a multiply minus one, just so it's going for me into the right direction. Actually, I think I inverted the wrong one. So there we go. Now my mouse is working properly. You can also see, we see the collisions and everything. Now we want to be able to move. For that we need the set throttle and we need the, we can drag this out from here because all of them need to be connected to the vehicle component. Set handbrake and steer. So steer is, well, steering left and right and throttle is um, how fast you, it's the forward and backwards movement, right? And for that, under the edit, strategic settings, under input, I've also set them up. I have a spacebar set up for jump. Uh, probably should rename this. I have a left and right uh, here, AD, and a back and forward, WS, W being one, S being minus one, A being minus one, D being one. So I can just get those forward, backward, left, right. And in my case, it's just uh, still called jump. I just should call it probably spacebar or something. And the forward backward goes into the throttle. Let's move the throttle up here and the axis goes in there. Then we have to steer the left and right. Plug this in here. And the handbrake is a little bit different. When we press it, we want to create a handbrake. And if we release it, we don't want a handbrake. So like that here. But we also have to plug in the vehicle movement component. We can also show you uncheck new handbrake in the second one. So whenever you release, you don't have a handbrake. I seem to have forgotten that here. I hit compile. And if we now press play, we should be able to move, though you can see my bone rotations are wrong. My, my collisions, I can see them. They look clearly in the wrong direction here. Yeah. 
The reason for that is what I usually do when I'm exporting from Blender. So select everything and it export FBX. What we did is on the armature change this axis here to the ones uh, to the default ones by Unreal. Though apparently the add-on already changes the direction. So what we need is the uh, default. Yeah, return to default. Right click, return to default. So primary Y, secondary X, and we export this again. And we go over here onto the purple one and re-import. So if we now hit play, we will see that our collisions go into the right direction and we can already move around. So when you use this um, add-on, apparently we shouldn't change the bone axis. Though you can see um, our back wheels, we, by the way, one thing here, if we go to the settings, yeah, the wheel settings, there is this shape radius, which we can make bigger for now. Let's make like a 75, so we see it. Hit compile, play. And we can see they're relatively big and the collisions work properly. Two things here. First of all, we can see our collisions here are pretty wrong. So we can fix this very easily by just going into the physics asset. As always, we going to change the mesh. And we can just select the bodies here and regenerate. And now those are fixed. If we hit play, you can see they are properly done. And the other thing is that we also steer with the back wheels, which we don't want, right? We don't want the back wheels to turn. So this is in the car BP. This is in our car test BP in the vehicle movement component. And where it says um, rear, rear, li rear left, rear right. We just have to disable steering. All right, hit compile. And now if we hit play, we can see we are not steering with the backwards. Though for some reason my inputs are inverted. So when I press right, uh, he's going left and the other way around. So I'm just going to go over here where the steering is here. Yeah? And I'm going to multiply this minus one, multiply minus one. And we plug this in, compile. And now everything should work just fine. Now, obviously, the collisions are a little bit big just because I wanted to show them. We can probably make them a little bit smaller. The way we can figure this out is if we go over to Blender, select this one here in the end window here, yeah, right? On the item, we can see the Z radius, which is uh, 0 0.72. And we want half of it. So basically 35, 30 ticks. So in the wheel settings, we're just going to type in 30 ticks. And we hit compile and play. And it's going to be pretty accurate, actually. And we can see we are driving. All right, and we also have to check the collision for the route because we changed it in. So just regenerate really quickly. And I wonder if it's the low FPS. What I'm going to do is go back to the car BP. And I'm going to uncheck the execute command here. And we can see everything is already running quite a lot smoother. And we get also get less jittery because we have more frames. This is, um, that was the reason. So one last thing we can see when we hit play, our wheels are not moving, right? And they're not turning and whatever. For that, we have to get our anim BP. So animation, animation blueprint. And what we have to do here is select the vehicle anim instance. This is pretty important because otherwise we don't get access to certain nodes. And then our car test, car test here, skeleton. Okay. And we can just open this up here. And we really only have to do one thing in here, which is get a wheel handler, wheel handler. And we're going to plug this in here. We get a converter, pretty nice. And we have to get a reference, mesh reference pose. And we hit compile. And now we should also get our turning wheels. We don't get our turning wheels because this animation blueprint currently is not in our Blueprint, so we have to select the blueprint and go to the mesh. And under animation, it's not set in there yet, so we have to put it in here. And now things are going to work. And you can see we are rotating our wheels and stuff. And there's ob obviously more we can adjust just to get less uh, or more control over it. It's probably also a little bit because my, my vehicle is so squarey. Yeah. For example, if we wouldn't want our wheels to rotate as much, what we can do is in the wheel settings, yeah, there is a steer angle and 70 is quite a lot. So 45 might be a little bit better. It makes more sense. 
and now we shouldn't get as much uh, steering. Ah, you can see in the set handbrake, I accidentally checked it on both, make sure it's only checked on one. So there are quite some more options which we can use in the wheel settings, first of all. Um, the shape width, I guess, the mass, the dampening, um, yeah, the suspension, the brakes we can change, and in the car VP, uh, under the vehicle movement component, we probably have also quite a lot more. So let me just make this big here. Let's look through it really quick. Sockets, vehicle setup. Now here, obviously, we have the uh, tires and the mass of the tires. We have the inertia body scale, which is basically what it's referring to is um, when one wheel moves up, the rest follows. Yeah. So inertia body scale is the fact that when one moves goes a little bit up, the rest will follow as well. Obviously, we want it. We can adjust this here as well. Steer setup here, we can change the curve of the steer. So basically how fast we can steer. So I guess if I would drag this all the way down, let's just see. I can basically, it takes me forever to steer. Uh, if I'm standing still, driving and then to the left, it's taking forever to like go this direction. If I'm changing this step back here, I can immediately steer basically. Here we have the max RPM, the max rotation per minute, I guess. Let's put this all the way up. If we put it all the way down, let's say one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one rotation per minute. You, you get a point, right? Very slow. But yeah, you have basically a lot of options where you can change stuff. I didn't play around with that myself yet. I just wanted to mainly show how you can bring a car into Unreal. Um, but the options you want to eventually mainly play with are under the wheel settings here, uh, how far we can steer, maybe a little bit of the mass here. Uh, here have, we also have like um, some options and over here in the wheel setup, vehicle setup, national body scale. Maybe avoidance is interesting, not, not sure about this yet. The mechanical setup, definitely and the steer setup. So um, I'm going to redo this really quickly and I'm going to do this with my proper car. So I'm going to delete all of that out here and I'm going to my other car here. You can see I already have some stuff in here. This one here is not important. I can delete this. So you can see I already built this car and I made sure when I press numpad one, then it's pointing to the right. I'm going to delete the rig here because the rig I made myself and it's wrong. I'm going to also select the whole car and I'm going to delete um, the vertex groups I already had in there. Now my car is all one mesh, which is problematic for this kind of setup. So what I'm going to do is hide everything here. So I can only select my tires, P selection. I'm going to set, select all the, um, actually select everything and set origin to 3D, uh, to geometry. And now the tiles will also have their um, origin in the geometry. So if I rotate this, you can see they're rotating around themselves. So now I'm going to use the vehicle setup again, the vehicle add-on. Um, this is going to be the base. So let's select the base, rear right, front left, rear left. Now we have to upscale objects, set unit scale, zoom it out, rig the vehicle. And we get our rig here. Now I can select everything, file, export, FBX, and I want to only export selected objects, only armature and a mesh, X forward, Z up, under geometry face for exporting our normals, armature, and here we want to have the default, make sure of it, no leaf bones, we don't have animations, and we can export this. So since I already set everything up here, I'm just going to right click and re-import with new file. And if I take a look here, everything looks just fine. One thing I have to do is select my car blueprint and put it as a default pawn class in here. I'm going to check the physics asset. Apparently I have no physics asset here, so um, probably need to delete those bones here. Then I'm going to select my root first of all, single convex hull, add bodies. There we go. Selecting all the tires, single convex hull. And there we go. Let's we go. Let's also show the constraints really quick. We got constraints. All right. And hit simulate. It's looking pretty fine. Then I go into the car VP. We already have set up the logic for the handbrakes and whatnot. In the vehicle component, uh, I have the wrong bone names. So we need the right bone names here. I need the RLRR. 
compile. Let's take a look here. And there we go. Uh, apparently I have <laughs> only the, the back tires are steering, so I need to go into the vehicle movement component. And here the FL and the FR are st uh, not steering, so we have to change this. And there we go. Now the front ones are steering. They are inverted for me for some reason again. So under steering, multiply minus one. Also, they are a little bit big, right? The collisions are pretty big here. So what I'm going to do is open the settings full. And I'm going to take a look inside my blend file here. How big is that one here? It's around a 0.7, so a 3.5 might be fine. 3.5, compile, and we get relatively, it's a little bit too small, I guess. Did I do something wrong to the back left? Um, RLRR. You can see this one is a little bit offset here. There we go. Just had one a little bit offset. No, uh, things properly work now. And we get a moving car. Just with a little bit of low FPS here. But even then, it's seemingly probably working. So what I'm going to do now is, like I did before, I'm just going to unplug this here in the event, event pick and play, because then we get some solid FPS again. One last thing I want to do. You can see when we are driving and we hit the handbrake, the handbrake, trying to like drift or something, right? Both uh, wheels lock down immediately. So what I want to do is create a second wheel settings. So what I want to do now is um, create a new blueprint credits and search for wheel again. And we're going to create another vehicle wheel. And we call this wheel underscore settings underscore front. Now we have to go to the car VP here, the movement component. And I'm going to change here for the front, um, yeah, FL front left, this to the front, this to the front. And for the back, I'm going to change this here, rear to the other one here. We can probably rename this to Nesco back. So, all right, rear has the back and front has the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm opening the settings for the back here and the settings for the front. And one was the original, so the back is the original where I have a 35 in here. I'm just going to put in the same numbers here, 35. And uh, you can see for the back, and here we have effect handbrake. For the back tire, I want it to be affected by the handbrake, but for the front tire, I don't want it. So I compile here, and if we're now driving, and we hit the handbrake, you can see, while it's me steering a little bit much if we're driving, we can at least drift a little bit because the front wheels are not affected by the handbrake. So I'm going to probably play a little bit more with uh, all those settings. And you can see the front wheels are also steering a little bit much, so the front here we have 70 where we only wanted a seven, uh, 45 so now there we go or better and we actually have a drift here 